What's up everybody? Trent Smith here and in this adventure we're at Petmall City Beach for three days. We have some new stuff to try. We got the crab traps. I got a refrigerator in here that I'm going to see if my solar panel will power. And I've got a pole spear in here too. We'll try our hand at a little spear fishing free diving. I don't know how that's going to work. Don't know how the crab is going to work. Don't know how much of it's going to work. But we're going to go for it. <laughs> also have some other new stuff to share with you guys. But regardless of what happens, what goes right or wrong is going to be an adventure. <laughs> oh, I've got a drone too. Boom. People have been asking me to get a drone for so long and I got one. I got it with me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I packed it. <laughs> it's a beautiful day though. We have pretty good weather for guys for the next few days. Let's just hope the water's nice and clear and beautiful for us so we can get in and get some goods. All right, that's my goal. I want to eat good from the ocean. Now for our first order of business, so we gotta get these crab pots out of the boat, make some more room, and we gotta get the chicken necks out of the refrigerator and in the crab pots and in the water. That's our bait, chicken necks. <laughs> Last time, what we used, dog food, like canned dog food, and I don't think we caught any. We gotta do better this time. Chicken necks are supposed to be where it's at. <laughs> and I don't really know where to put crab pots. There is a buoy back there. Maybe there's a crab pot back there, so maybe maybe this is a good spot. I really don't know. I mean, suppose someone told me one time, put them up by like some muddy creeks. Well, I don't want to do that. I want to be operating in the, kind of the same area most of this week or most of the next three days. So I'm going to put them right here. It's about nine foot of water. So we're about to just drop her in here. This will work. Now we kill an old Yamaha. Okay. And we're here. Let's grab some bait. Right now it is 37 degrees in there. It fluctuates from like 30 to maybe 37 ish, I think. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Alright, let's check her out. We got some egg salad in a bag. We got some deer sausage. We got some chicken necks, some quail that my mom makes for me. Oh, that's the best thing ever. And I got some water in here too. All right, so we just need the chicken necks right now. Close her back down. Zip her back up. Keep her insulated. Now this sucker, it's not showing that it's charging. But I think that's because it's at 100%. Yeah, because that's not blinking. And there's no draw on it right now because... The fridge, it cycles on and off. So whenever it cycles on and draws power, that's when the solar panels start putting current in here. So it's staying topped off. But of course that's because we just started and the sun's out. But the question is, is it gonna last all night? You know, how much is it gonna drain my battery bank? And then how much will the solar panel be able to keep back up? You know, can we get back to 100% tomorrow? If we can do that, we'll be doing good. But I don't think we will with this panel, but I think with another panel, I think we'll be able to. I don't know. I hope so. I need to remember to close the crab traps. Yeah, didn't I leave them open? And that's... I did. Let's not do that again. That was dumb. Okay. Next up, chicken neck. Oh man, it's frozen. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. There's one. Oh, check it on the camera. I think it's ready. Up real quick. We'll just kind of, as we head out, we'll drop the other one over. Let's get it ready. Crank her up and load back. All right, there goes our first one. Over there. All right. 
Alright, there's two crab traps out. Now we're just gonna go up and find some protected waters. Get the anchor set back out. We're getting a little bit of wind. A little bit of rain action. Pretty bad right over there. But it's kind of turning around us, thankfully. Now that we're settled, I'll share with you guys a little bit more about what my plan and intentions are for these three days. So right now, we're in these flats. I'm gonna hop out with my pole spear in a little bit once the wind kind of dies down and the sun comes back out so I can see good. Maybe I can gig a flounder. But then tomorrow, we're going to go out into the gulf and hit a really near shore wreck. See if the conditions are all right for us to anchor and to free dive that wreck and maybe get something with a pole spear. I don't know. May get lucky, may have a flop, but we'll have fun trying. I just wanna shoot something and I wanna eat it. <laughs> so surely with us trying all these different methods, of procuring or whatever, catching something. Hopefully we can make it happen. <laughs> so while we're sitting here waiting on the weather to blow over and conditions to get a little bit better, we'll go over the sponsor for this video. It's pretty interesting to be honest with you. Check this out. This. No, it's not candy. <laughs> Check this out. And no, I'm not addicted to pain meds. I know that's what you're thinking. I actually hope that's not what you're thinking about me. <laughs> oh, that's what that too. This. So the sponsor of this video is Jace Medical. Basically, in short, it's like I have all these antibiotics and medications that are prescribed to me specifically that I got by going through like a real online medical consultation, right? By board certified doctors who prescribe me these antibiotics. This stuff is 100% legal and it's funded by a board certified doctor, right? So it comes with five antibiotics, it comes with the case and this uh, emergency antibiotic guide, which I haven't really read through, but I'm sure is very interesting reading. <laughs> so this is great for me because like, I don't like going to the doctor and a lot, a lot of people don't like going to the doctor. So if you end up getting sick or if maybe medications are hard to get or maybe you're traveling or I don't know, maybe uh, the world goes through some crazy pandemic and locks down or I don't know, maybe some of this stuff gets hard to find. Who knows what could happen these days? This would be good to have on hand. But, so for me personally, it's not a matter of if, but more like when will I need these antibiotics and I want to go to the doctor and stuff to get them. What do we got here? Uh, amoxiclab, I don't know what this stuff is, doxycycline, hyclate, ciproflax, saxon, metron, nidazone, zole. And then what is this? This is erythromycin. Oh, what is this for? Let's see if there's anything important in here really fast. What is it? I have no idea. Oops. Oh, sweet. Okay, got it. Contents by drug. Amoxicillin is for like bite wounds, pneumonia, sinusitis. The erythromycin is for pneumonia, urinary tract infection, or traveler diarrhea. <laughs> Ciproflaxin is for anthrax exposure and infection, plague exposure and infection, like bioterror stuff. Doxycycline is for anthrax, bites, plague, skin infections, tetanus, is that tetanus? Yeah, probably like tetanus shot. Metronidazole is for bacterial vaginosis, diarrhea by Giardia. You got this guy that really helps you out. If... <laughs> but really and truly, I'm glad I partnered with Jace. It's like that. <laughs> See, I really do like the little case. I mean, I'm all about little cases and bags. This is cool. There's also room for any other personal meds or vitamins that you might take, all right? Thank you, Jay's Case, for sponsoring this video. And I really do hope you guys check this out if it's interesting to you. It's not super expensive. I mean, it's pretty, pretty sweet deal. All right, check it out. Hey, you know what? It's pretty calm out here. Other than the crazy freaking pontoon and jet ski rentals zipping around everywhere. So I might could jump in the water and see if we can see anything. Because, man, it is pretty. But I need a quick snack. Of course, I haven't eaten enough today. I don't like when I don't eat enough. Not good for me. So let's see what we got. Something unique. Protein on the run. A bumblebee. You know, I eat their sardines every day, so. Sometimes, what is this? Comes with a candy. <laughs> Three crackers. Of course, I love this. Off the spork. Olive oil and black pepper tuna. Mmm, smells good. Let's get it straight up first. Certainly better than straight tuna. <laughs> I tried on a cracker. This is normally against my uh, preferences, but whatever. I haven't had grains at all. Well, okay. I haven't had much grains. I had grains one time for a, a cookie in like the past like two weeks. I've been pretty darn strict. 
Let's try this. Mmm. Yeah, baby. Mm. Man, that salt on that cracker is good. Delicious quick snack. I'm gonna pass on the caramel. I'll bring it home to my kids. Now let's get in the water. That's what we're here for. Mm. Oh, and it's so pretty right now. Saw our trash from a recycled Ziploc for breakfast from last trip. I normally would have taken this out of the box and just brought what I eat, but I brought it all to show you guys. <sighs> Might as well grab some cool drink. That's nice. No ice? Shoot, man. I'm ready to get me a permanent solar panel up on the roof. That project should be coming in August, which is when you'll all be seeing this, probably. All right, man, surrounded by sea gnats. There goes water out there. Shoo. Shoo. Shall we? Shoot the We shall. <laughs> Let me get my, my gun on. <laughs> Alright, so I've got a new little toy. That's a head is for had it for a while. Cold steer. A little one of them called a paralyzer tip. Just a stunner tip, something on the end of it. Made for small fish, but that's probably all we're gonna get. Maybe I can get a flounder with it. Let's see. Well, folks, we uh, we got a little problem. When I got in the water earlier, the seal where my battery goes into my camera, it wasn't sealed correctly, and water got into my DJI Osmo. So I got out, took it apart, shook the water out, left it out in the sun for a while, stayed in the water for about two hours, missed one flounder, like <laughs> totally my mistake, but missed the flounder, and now I'll get back in, and now my camera will not turn on and stay on. All right, and I'm like, okay, that's all right. I brought another camera, my big boy camera, but then I don't have the SD card to go in it. So I've got my phone. That's okay. I used to film a lot of adventures just with the phone. So this is a little depressing, but whatever. We're gonna keep going, all right? <laughs> right now I just got out some quail from the fridge. Isn't that cool? <laughs> from the fridge. <laughs> I'm about to set them out in the sun, open them up, and there, I'll show you. I gotta heat them up. Where are we gonna put them? Ooh, what if we put them up on top of the bimini? There we go. Now it's like a solar oven we got going on here. <laughs> solar power, solar oven. We're good. Gosh, yeah, I was just down there. There wasn't much to see. I was shocked I didn't see more fish than I did. Check out all the beta fish over here. Y'all see all those little bitty jokers? Bunch of bait fish out there. They're too small for my cast net. God. And even if I did catch anything in my cast net, there ain't no fish out there to catch. <laughs> I mean, that's all, I think, one mackerel. That was about it. Dinner is served. Y'all have no idea how good this is. So this is a whole quail stuffed with sausage and then wrapped with bacon. Mm. Thank you, Mom. They left this little quail heart. <laughs> So 
got online, did some research about the camera, and there's a chance it could come back to life. So I'm just going to let it dry out tonight. Hope it works tomorrow. I don't know. We'll see. But even if it doesn't, I still got this camera. I still have my drone. So we'll still have some fun. It just won't be as much underwater footage. But no worries. We can get by without that, I guess. <laughs> so since we're kind of having a not so great day with our camera dying, we're going to go for a little dopamine <laughs> hits. Courtesy of Try Treats, you guys have seen me eat these. Indonesia. By the way, these people, they don't pay me. They just send me this stuff. I'm like, heck yeah, I'll share it because this is so much fun. Cookies and cream, wafer bites. Look at those dark chocolate cookie thins. Oh, and we are, ooh, what is this? I, ooh, volcano potato barbecue. All right, let's try those first. You know, does it seem like a lot of my content is about food? Well, I'm sorry. I don't mean to do that. I just, I like food. Food is a fun experience. Ooh, okay, a little spice. They're all right. They're more like puffs or something than a chip. That's going to be good. Mm-hmm. No high fructose corn syrup. Good job, guys. Okay. Next up, then I'm going to devour all this stuff. I mean, not all of it. What's some funky stuff? Candy, cheese crackers, cheese crackers. What is this? Now, that looks good. Is that salt on it? Is that sugar? It's probably sugar. With a sprinkle of silver. Chocolate cracker. <laughs> Everybody loves these. Yeah. That's worth that. Pretty good. Now, I'm going to save the rest for my kids. I'll take it home. They always like trying this stuff. It's a lot of fun to do with the kids. Like I said, they don't pay me anything to do this. This is just a fun thing. A little something to add to the video for you guys. And it's fun for me. And I get to bring them home to my kids. <laughs> if you have kids, grandkids or something, this is a great little, you know, subscription box to get them. Sitting here watching the sun set. It's not too grand, but it is setting out there. So tomorrow, I think I told you my intentions are to go offshore or out into the Gulf. Maybe not far offshore, but just off the beach and do some snorkeling. There's a wreck there called the E.E. E. Simpson Tug. And I'm about to see if I can put the coordinates into my GPS and see if they work. Sometimes in the past, or like the time or the two times I've tried to put coordinates into my GPS, they didn't match up. Let's see if it works today. <laughs> All right, I got the coordinates off the internet, put them in my journal, and then I plugged them in to here. Now let's see if we can get to it. Let's just go to the chart. Hello, chart. Should be right. There it is, right there. Oh, let's zoom in over here. Sweet, the E.E. E. Simpson. So tomorrow we'll just head out, go out, psh, out into the pass, zip down the coast a bit to the E.E. E. Simpson. The sunset's getting a little nicer. Mm-hmm. So now we just hope for calm seas tomorrow, which is calling for a one-foot seas, but 10-knot winds, which is kind of breezy. Then we hope for clear water, and we hope that our camera, which is still kind of trying to dry out, we hope that she comes back alive. Darn, why did it have to do that? Oh, well. <laughs> Folks, well, it's creeping up on 9 o'clock, and it's time for me to go to bed. Got my wonderful bed made here in the boat, and there's no bugs bothering me, so that's very nice. So I'm about to hit it. I'll see y'all in the morning, all right? Oh, let's do it. Oh. So nice. Morning, y'all. It's 5:45. We got a pretty good sh shower coming through, but there's a lot of wind in it. Ooh, it's dark gray too. Sunrise was nice for a few minutes. All right, we'll just wait it out. It's too early. Lucky for us, the rain was just a quick, but 
thick shower. Now I've got this beautiful sunrise. All right, so our fridge has been running all night. Let's check the temp on her. 37 degrees. Now let's see how much juice she's sucked out of this bad boy. Let's see. Oh, wow. We're still at 80% or better. You guys see that? That is incredible. To be honest with you, I was thinking we'd be down around like, I don't know, 50 or lower than 80%. For sure. Holy cow. That's awesome. We pretty much have unlimited power, I guess, for that. But then, once we get a better and more efficient and rigid panel up on the top, we'll have so much power. Oh, <laughs> that's going to be great. Oh, and then we can even use it as a freezer, probably, if we wanted to. But we don't have to. No, why do I need to freeze stuff? Totally awesome. Mm, I'm excited about that. All right, we just weighed anchor this morning. I think we're gonna go try this little barge up here before all the jet skis and tour boats and stuff get out. We'll hit the barge real quick and see if we get lucky. It's 7.30, so it's still moderately early, but the sun's up enough where we can see. And the sunken barge is literally just, you know, 400 yards away. And while we have our anchor out, you know, instead of putting it all in the bag, let's just go ahead and toss her out and make good use of her. You folks know that I would absolutely love to bring you along, but that's not happening because she's still out of commission, okay? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Let's just try. A guy on YouTube said he just let it dry out and it worked, but when I turn it on, the red lights are just stuck on, which means bad, I guess. <laughs> but I will share a little quick tip with you guys. If you have trouble with your mask fogging up, if you never heard, Baby shampoo works fantastic. So what I usually do before I get in the water, I'll just take and drop a drop on the lens. Boop. That's too big of a dollop. Wipe it around the lens here. And then when I get in before I actually put them on, I'll just wipe it around again and they'll be ready to rock and roll. No fog. Maybe I'll come back with breakfast, all right? <laughs> Chances are slim, but there's still a chance. <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> all right, adios amigos. Wait, I meant to say trip dip, sorry. Yeah. Sometimes I forget my own little saying. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna turn this off. Uh, me and the old pole spear are about to go see if we can do some damage. All right, see ya. Well, it wasn't a total flop. I took like four shots and I made contact twice. My first two shots were actually pretty decent. And the first one, the fish stuck on there pretty good. I thought I had him, but he came off at the last, I don't know, after about three seconds, he came off. And then I tried to pick up a crab, a blue crab, but he got me in the, oh, he did get me in the finger. Look at there. I didn't realize it was bleeding. Yeah, he got me in the finger, and that's my guitar finger. That joker. Now, I know that some of my audience members probably know a little bit about spear fishing, and even if you know a little bit, you probably know more than me. <laughs> but one thing I do know is that I, yeah, I realize I probably do have the wrong tip here. This is more for like getting like lionfish, and I don't know, something else. I'm pretty sure it's the wrong spear tip for my application. I do actually have the correct spear tip and a bigger pole spear, but when I ordered it, the threads don't match and the adapter I ordered didn't work. So that's why I don't have that. <laughs> so I'm trying with what I've got. Story of my life, right? <laughs> but I was happy to see that there were a few blue crabs out there. Pretty decent sized ones, actually. I didn't see any yesterday. And I made me a little worried that my crab traps 
may not be uh, being very fruitful. But hopefully they will be. So I think what we're gonna do is we're about to head out to the Gulf, and while we're going, we're gonna be trolling this little something, I don't know, mirror lure or something, I don't know what it is. But I'm just gonna throw it out behind the boat and I'm just gonna put put out there and maybe we'll get lucky. <laughs> oh, and the type of fish I was taking shots at, I think they were little like uh, mutton snappers or something. And there was one that was a little bit bigger. I don't know what it was, but I really, I don't know what they are. Just, I don't know, maybe look it up and I'll let you know, okay? <laughs> In the editing process. Because right now I have no idea what they were. They were fish. And they were an eatable size, so I was shooting. <laughs> so now it's time to do what's becoming one of my favorite things to do, and that's go in the fridge and get some breakfast. Oh, and the cool thing about this is it tilts from both sides. Boom, check it out. Reach in here. Grab our egg salad in a bag. <laughs> And we'll zip her back up, keep her insulated, text the fridge and makes it more efficient. You know, I haven't even talked about what this fridge is. Let's talk about it for a second. All right. So the fridge is from Iceco. It's their JP40 Pro or maybe the JP50 Pro. I think it's a 50. It's a brand new model. They're actually, they're not selling it yet because they don't have the stock up yet because their you know production and stuff has been slacking these days. But it is the one that I made a video on a few months back. And I've been hesitant to bring the boat, like I said, because I didn't know if I could support it power-wise, but it looks like I can. Now it's going to be on like every single trip or every time I bring the boat out. Especially once I get a solar panel permanently mounted to the roof. Golly. This solar's really got me thinking, like, what if I built like a strictly a solar-powered boat? Or turn some catamaran or something to some solar-powered boat. Just a thought that'd be fun. It'd be slow, but and you can go anywhere forever. All right, we got our line out. We'll see if anything bites it and we'll hope the goal's clear, all right? I'm just going to cruise nice and easy. I'm not in a big rush. I don't think, at least not right now, I may get in a rush. But who knows, that could change. I could reel that sucker in and we could just get on out of here. Skin her back in a minute. But. jump in by myself and leave the boat unattended. <laughs> Probably not. So we're circling back. We got a plan B, don't worry. What do we say? There's never no plan B, we just execute plan A. Yeah, sometimes I'd say that. Sometimes you can. <laughs> sometimes there are limiting factors that are out of our control that force us to do things that we're not plan A. Like I got him on, but man, if I had that other tip, I'd be slaying him. We're coming back. 
We're gonna load the boat one day, y'all watch. This is awesome. Next thing I'm gonna do now is clean him up, throw him in the skillet, and eat him. <laughs> yes! Yes! Can't believe it, we got one. Cutting board, my knife that Ron gave me, finally I get to use it. Sheesh, it's about time I ate it, man. I'm gonna have to apologize, my camera angles are limited because I don't have a great mount to be clamping all around the boat for my phone. Work with me, all right? Work with me, we got this at least. Come on, big boy. That's a knife right there, Mike. You call that a knife? <laughs> All right, got him filleted up. Two good fillets. I took my time on them and really tried to get all the meat I could off of this sucker. And I think I did pretty good. Now, rinse these. Never ready for the skillet, baby. Mmm. Leave the skin on it. There's a lot of nutrients and stuff in the skin. And flavor to me. I like the fishy flavor. Got my scale and spoon. I rinse it a little bit. It smells like I'm in a fine restaurant. See if it tastes the same. <laughs> Pretty good. A little bone, huh? Mmm. That's all right. Finally, I've been wanting to do that for years. Spear fish, cook it, eat it. Seriously, for years. <laughs> Why haven't I done it? I don't know. It's hard to find a spot. Then you're by yourself. I gotta figure out how to do it more consistently. If I had my other pole spear, it's like two or three foot longer with a bigger band, which means it has more weight, you know, so it'll punch through a fish and I'll have a different spear tip on there. More, you know, impact, more range. Everything's better with it. I just gotta get the right pieces and adapters and stuff to make it work. <laughs> so I'm so thankful I got to do this. We still gotta check those crab traps. We may do that here in a few minutes. I don't know, it's almost noon. We may wait until a little bit later in the day uh, so that we'll catch them and we'll come over here and we'll make a campfire and cook them. Eating good today. I hope we get some crabs, we will be. Pretty curious to see how we did. <laughs> Man, it's gonna be so hot if we gotta go cook these suckers. <laughs> or just toss them in the cooler, I don't know. Well, I need to get ready, don't I? Because there's one. And there's another right out there. No crabs, no bait. <laughs> Man, probably what the other one looks like too. <laughs> Dunked on this one too. Man. I don't know. <laughs> you gotta understand that. That I leave them out there too long and they ate all the bait and they climbed out. 
Or did little minnows just pick up my chicken necks? Huh. They were out there for about 24 hours. Oh well, we don't have to start a hot campfire. <laughs> I just don't understand all this stuff. But I'm trying to learn. Am I wrong to be a little bit surprised that these are empty? Gosh. Whatever. We'll put them up. <laughs> now they're just taking up space. Guess I could put them on the bow or something tonight. Probably will do that. 245. You know, I can almost use a little siesta. Almost. I guess I will do some reading. I've only been reading this book on the boat. I read a lot yesterday, actually. I don't know how far we'll get today. 102. So this thing around my neck, check this out. So companies are all the time just messaging me and be like, hey, we got this cool product. You want to check it out? Or actually, a lot of times it's not a cool product. But this is a cool product. This is a like portable air conditioner. So it's got little fans here, but not only does it have fans, right in here it has these metal plates and they're like cooling plates. Like they get cold, short enough cold. And when you put it around your neck, all the blood that's running through your neck gets cooled and it just cools the rest of your body. It just makes you feel so nice and cool. This is the Coolify 2 actually. I used to have the first one and it was okay, but this one's even better. It's got, I don't know, it's got some upgrades. It's nice. I can't really feel the fans because I do have some breeze here, but the breeze isn't very cool. It's actually a pretty warm breeze. I do have some frozen water. Yeah, I brought a cooler just in case the fridge situation didn't pan out. But as it turns out, the fridge is working great. But yes, I did kind of need a cooler if I did catch some fish or some crabs, but... Uh. Yeah, definitely check this out and all this other junk I've been talking about, there'll be links in the description below if you're interested. If not, let's keep living an adventure. But right now, I'm going to see where this adventure takes I me. Mean, this is Tanya Ebby about her solo circumnavigation around the world on a 26-foot sailboat, not much bigger than this, and she was like 19 or 18 when she started. It's a pretty, pretty good book. If I second go around reading it, I would suggest it. It's pretty nice. Yep. Oh. So we did some reading for a while. Now I'm about to walk up here to this nice little beach and do a quick little workout. I need a little workout. And everybody needs a little workout. Who wants to look at a boat? Love that boat. I love this spot. Some floundering in sandy patches. Probably not going to happen. I think we're going to do like a mixture of bear crawls, lunges, and sort of like modified handstand push-up type things. Maybe just, I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to push till it hurts, then we're going to run a little bit. Maybe run some shuttles or something. Those be low lunges. Mm. Ants? Why are there ants? Never seen ants all over the beach before. Are you kidding me? I'm gonna have to do this workout in the water. <laughs> Dude, there's ants everywhere. Why are there freaking ants on the beach? <laughs> we'll do lunges in the water. I guess we'll do everything in the water. And this water is hot. That water is so hot. Start out nice and easy. 92. We're doing 100 unbroken. Alright, 100 unbroken lunges to start. 
Now we're warmed up. How so many of those I can do, slow and unbroken. Uh oh, device is too hot. All right, we put her in the shade. I did 40 of those, I'm broke. Are sinking. <laughs> My face starts hitting the sand. <laughs> All right, we're gonna keep those going. That's good. Okay, those shuttles whoop me at the end, and this water's so freaking hot. I hope it's cooler. I hear where the boat is. Well, we got some cold water in the boat, thank God. Gotta get your workout in, y'all. Take care of yourself, take care of your body, eat good, exercise, so you can live bigger and better adventures. It's that simple. Well, the water temps out here at least are a little bit below body temperature. Yeah. Oh, thank goodness. Actually, it's about the same temp. <laughs> Maybe even a little warmer. Oh, man. All right, it's time for a refreshment. How many flavors we got? One, two. I got a new. I don't know, maybe soon to be sponsor for a couple of videos, but I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you guys. It's Element, it's like some electrolyte packs. I was reached out by another company and blah, 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 but whatever. We won't go through that right now. But anyways, these have good ingredients. <laughs> and I'm about to mix some. This man, they are good. And they have some funky flavors. My favorite so far, the first one I tried, cause it's so freaking off the wall, was chocolate salt. <laughs> it's freaking awesome. Oh man, this is gonna be a show here. Wide mouth into little mouth. <laughs> so here we got mango chili, citrus salt, and orange salt. Citrus it is, citrus salt. And it says to add to 16 to 32 ounces of water. What are we, this is probably, what, 33 right here? 33.8, so. We're about 16. Replenish those electrolytes. Get that salt in. Good salt. And it's got potassium and magnesium in it too. Just the good stuff. No sugar, no carbs. Good if you're on keto, blah, blah, blah. Some of the other brands have those ingredients, which is why I chose Element. Yes, I chose Element. I already shot them. Mmm. Mmm. I love a little salt. Ooh. Boy, salt, citrus, that's about like a margarita right there. <laughs> it hit me, I'm like, what? I know this flavor, whoa. <laughs> it's margarita. Man. A little Jimmy Buffett in a packet right here. Mmm. <laughs> well, that's interesting. That's very interesting. It's important what you eat, how you treat your body. So important. That's why you see me working out when I'm on... What you guys think is vacation. <laughs> it's really not vacation, it's work. Okay, got my little drone toy out. Let's just see if we can get some good shots of the boat, right? Oh. I am gonna take it up to the beach, because I don't know about landing it on the boat yet. I don't know how that's gonna work. I need like a big old, like a butterfly net, so when it like comes by, when I fly it by the boat, I just go shoo, and you'll catch it like a big butterfly net or something, because I don't want to drop it in the water. <laughs> It's a little breezy out here, but I think she'll do all right. I've only flown it like 
three times around the house, <laughs> around the yard. <laughs> just been kind of hanging out and having some chill time and I was editing a reel for Instagram on my phone and stuff like that I'm gonna finish it up with some drone footage so that should be pretty interesting and I've just been sitting here just taking in the peaceful evening wasn't much of a sunset but the bay is so peaceful and I'm still anchored in the same spot as where I took the drone footage so I'm just out here just at the edge of the huge bay but you can see as we look across to Panama City I mean you can see how calm the bay is is absolutely gorgeous quiet just peaceful i love it and i'm actually sitting here anchored in about i don't know maybe 16 18 inches of water no worries i love this shallow draft boat i mean she's drafting probably about seven inches right now i think they claim about eight inches but we're packed pretty light and i was looking at her today and she's kind of like her water line is sitting out of the water so she's sitting pretty shallow right now. So I like that. <laughs> I could just hang out anywhere and everywhere. And the boat's so efficient. There's just so much about this boat that I absolutely love. One of the main things though, when it comes to adventures, it's just so much easier for me to create content and to have an adventure aboard this boat versus a kayak, a paddleboard, or a skiff. This just absolutely changes the game for the content that I can create for you guys. These are just so much easier gosh like every time something happens like whether it rains or whether it's hot or whether i don't know something goes wrong or i need to do something i just think about oh my gosh remember what this would have been like back in the day when i was paddling or i was on a, on a skiff you know like there's just so many benefits to this little boat i love it i love it and, and i even met a cool subscriber today from kentucky jared Talk with him for a little bit. He even did a little bit of filming for me for a thumbnail. And one thing he asked me is, man, how long are we going to keep this boat? And, you know, I've thought about that. And I'm probably going to keep this boat for quite a while. There's a lot of reasons, but this is just an awesome boat. Okay, I got my bed pretty much made. So I'm about to hit it and get up early in the morning. And we'll get back in the water tomorrow. And we might spear some stuff to bring home to my family. I've got a little local contact between about like a sunken shrimp boat up that way. And we might hit this kind of on our way home. So, good night. See you in the morning. Good morning, y'all. It is another beautiful morning. Slept great last night. Oh, I did have to get the fan out. This is my Out XE fan. You guys have seen me use this for, I don't know, at least two years now. I really, really love this fan. I bring it with me all the time. And I just clip it wherever I need to clip it. And it'll just blow wherever you want it to blow. It's super awesome. There's probably others out there like it, but I know this one works really well. Matter of fact, there's no breeze right now. Oh, now there is. <laughs> I just checked the tides and high tide is at 1130 today. So that means for the rest of the morning, it's going to be pretty good snorkeling. So let's see if our camera is working. See if it's dried out enough yet. For some reason, I doubt it. 
battery in. She just may be gone. She may be done. I don't know. I'll take it home and uh, maybe put it in rice, but I may just put it in the oven really slowly. Put it in my dehydrator. Boom. Look at that. Brilliant. That's thinking. Hey, I've never thought about that. That's, that might be a good idea. Oh, well. It's not a total deal breaker. Right now, it is 2 minutes to 7 a.m. So we're going to let the sun come up just a little bit more because it's still pretty low out there. Want it to come up a little bit higher so it'll shine down in the water, be able to see a little better. And we might head up to that sucking trip boat before we head out and see if we can spear some fish to bring home. I'll just toss them right in the fridge in there. And then on the way home, I'll just plug the fridge in in my truck. And just everything works great, I hope. It'd be cool to bring home some fish for the kids. And for me, of course. <laughs> oh yeah, yesterday when I was up on the beach, I found this thing. It's a Shimano butterfly. And I looked it up. It's a butterfly cocoon. Oh, it's got full of sand though. It's made to wrap around like your rod and lure uh, in order to keep the hooks, I think, from hooking into stuff and keep it from rattling around and scratching up the fancy lures, but I don't have that. But since I do store my rod with the hooks on it up in the V-berth, this would be smart to put around it so my treble hooks don't get caught on anything. We find some cool stuff, I tell you. Yeah, see, this is just really, really exposed there. I think that's supposed to go over your actual rod, but we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna wrap it. I'd say that looks pretty good. Would y'all believe that sucker's like 27 bucks on Amazon? <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, cool. Let's go put her away now. Now well, then, that's better. Man, I hate we didn't get the old guitar out, but my finger is just, it's not in a good condition to be playing guitar. And you know what, now's a good time to check on the battery bank, see how she did through the night. Boom, look at that. So I think it's like, I don't know, around 80% or so. Fridge is still at 33 degrees. That is so cool. It's such a freeing feeling that you don't have to worry about that stuff. Especially when I know that I'm going to get a solar panel that's going to be putting more juice into my batteries. It's going to be, man, I mean, I never have to think about that again. Don't have to think about ice. Don't have to think about my batteries going dead. Don't have to think about it blowing off the top or getting wet or... This random wire that's coming down <laughs> into my cabin, <laughs> you know, it's it'll just be done right, and it'll be nice. And then I've also been looking into the lithium-ion batteries, like a hundred amp hour battery, which I think those power banks down there are about thirty-eight amp hours, which is obviously plenty. But what if I get one that's a hundred and it's about the same price as one of those? It's about five hundred bucks. You can buy some for cheaper than that, but I spend about five hundred dollars and get a freaking battery that will just go forever, pretty much. I mean, I'm thinking about doing that, too. Because of fuel prices coming down, thank you, Lord, you know, we got to think about things like, you know, what about a Florida Keys trip? What about jumping over to the Bahamas or heading out to the Dry Tortugas? You know, we need to be more self-sustainable or just more prepared for that situation. And having the solar panel and a bigger battery would just eliminate one more thing to worry about. And I like things to be simple or as simple as they can be, but also provide some amenities if they can, right? Sure, I could go super simple and just paddle over there, but nobody's want to do that. <laughs> Once I got there, it'd be, it would suck. <laughs> so tell me, what do you want to see? You want to see the Florida Keys, the Bahamas, or the Dry Tortugas? Let me know. I mean, probably what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plan on going to the Florida Keys and be prepared to jump to the Bahamas or to the Dry Tortugas, depending on the weather. But I would like to hear your guys' opinion. But also, there's some other bigger trips that I want to take, too, that I have in mind.
All right, just pulled up to a little fun snorkel spot right here at St. Andrews State Park. We'll snorkel these jetties right here for a little bit. Let's see what we can see because it's you know, high tide, it's nice and beautiful. You see a lot of different fish and just huge schools of small fish. So it's really a pretty cool spot. And yes, I got some luck on my lips because, well, I'm about to have a mask on and I got it on my neck and I'm about to have a long shirt on. You know, I'm about to be face down in the water, right? So, you know, just a targeted sunblock application. And of course, still rocking the old blue lizard. This stuff works, y'all. Yeah, it's kind of white when it goes on, but that's the stuff that works. Because what it is, it's just a bunch of like little white, what's the material? Is it zinc oxide or something? Whatever, it's like a thousand little mirrors that are reflecting the sun off of your skin. That's what it is. It's not like a chemical sunblock. It's a physical sunblock. I wish I had a camera to show this to you guys, but I don't. Well, that was fun. A good hour or so. And I will say the water here is absolutely beautiful. It's great when you can catch it to high tide. But I did find a few lead weights, right? These are pretty valuable. <laughs> Someone lost out there on the rocks and stuff. Ooh. So I'll kind of uh, clean these up, break them down, and I'll save them for one day when I learn how to use them right. <laughs> All right, now let's go to the shrimp boat. Maybe we'll be able to, I don't know, spear a few things and bring some goods home. issues I see with the shrimp boat is oh it's not a super issue but it's not gonna be in clear water like here <laughs> which is what I prefer <laughs> something about dark and dingy water is just not very comforting call me weird <laughs> but sometimes you gotta face your fears you know that's just that is a fear you know you don't know what's in the water and that's something that I've been trying to get over personally you know not fear of the water because I don't have fear of the water just fear of the unknown in the water, I guess you could say. But I have been kind of trying to face those fears in a sense and going out and making myself do those things. But also I have been you know, watching videos and kind of learning about people and their interactions with sharks and stuff and how it's really not that big of a deal. It's not as big of a deal as we you know, make it out to be in our heads. So you just gotta jump in and do it. You gotta jump in and do it too. Don't make me be the only one. Do it, live it. Shrimp us right up here. At least it is nice and calm out here. Huh. Well, that's interesting. Hey, this isn't too bad of a spot. Water's not too bad. I mean, it's decently clear. Got a shrimp boat right over here. So I found out about this spot from a local guy. He's actually, he has a charter over in Pennell City. What's it called? Anchor Charters, I think it was. He was kind enough to tell me about this spot. He said there's sometimes some mangrove on here. So maybe we'll get some, the same thing we got yesterday. But uh, man, I appreciate you uh, letting me know about this spot. And I hate we didn't get to see each other yesterday, but hey, I'll be back down here, man. And he shared with me the story on this thing. Like what happened is it caught on fire and it was sinking and there were no life jackets on board, but everybody got off and then the fire boat pushed it up in the shallows so it didn't sink out there and make an obstruction or something. So perfect little reef now. <laughs> okay, let's see what we can do. Well, no, look, there were a few down there, maybe like one or two shooters, but I took one shot and I got contact, but spear just didn't stick. But next time I'll have a better spear and a better tip and I'll have better luck. Cause like there's quite a few shots that I've taken where I've made contact and good, some of them really good contact, but just the fish didn't stick or didn't stay. Like he'd stick for like a few seconds and he'd, he'd come off. So the proper equipment would assist in that. <laughs> Have another good old egg salad. 
Hmm. Wait, we need sardines first. I'm on trip. Get it right. You know what? We're gonna treat ourselves. I think. Yes, we are. These are not just ordinary sardines. These are also by Bumblebee, who make Beach Cliff, who make the sardines of water that I eat every single day and have for the past what four or five years or so. This is like one of their sister companies. This is Brunswick, and this is sardine fillets. Okay, in spring water, so it's fantastic. I mean, so delicious. I mean, just that stuff. Gosh, it's so good. Mmm. Can't catch them. Can them. You might can. Whatever. <laughs> so one of my intentions and goals for this three-day trip was to test out the systems, right? Test out and see if my solar panel could sustain this fridge, and it is wonderfully, and test out a little bit of pole spearing. And that somehow worked out. I mean, we did get one. That was fantastic. But we know how to improve on that. We know how to improve on our solar panels. And I have a few other small improvements that I want to do on the boat as well. And I'm probably having a video coming soon in regards to that. But I hope you enjoyed it. There's more to come. We're just preparing ourselves for bigger and better adventures and better videos for you folks. All right, y'all. Take care of yourselves. Get out there. God bless. And I'll see you on the next video or adventure. Love ya.